Sonic Boom was released on Wii U last year to a fairly negative critical reception. It was panned across the board by critics and not even many of the fans are coming to its defense this time, but a lot of people have asked, what went wrong? Why did the graphics suddenly get much worse partway through development? And why does that first trailer look so much better than the game we have today? Well, I've been speaking to a few former developers of Big Red Button to find out a bit more on what happened, to find out their side of the story. Some of this was already known or rather assumed, but it's nice to get some confirmation and something a bit more concrete. So contrary to what some have said, Sonic Boom was not in the works for years and years and years. There were some suggestions that there was some work done on it as far back as 2009 because of certain dates on certain resumes. This isn't the case. Sonic Boom is not all that Big Red Button has worked on. In its early days, they struggled trying to get work. They worked on a number of other projects, all new IPs that were never greenlit and were cancelled. It wasn't until years later that Sega would step in and save the day and offer them the contract for Boom after a proposal of theirs went through. Of course, at the time it wasn't called Boom, it went through a number of name changes as Sonic Stadium highlighted, Synergy was one name they considered. Over the past several months, sites like Sonic Stadium have been doing some really great portfolio digging to find material like this, supposed unused content, cut areas, that sort of thing. One video, for instance, shows an apparent hub world area that was never implemented. What's notable about this is that the graphics look a lot better than anything seen in the final game. In the first trailer released for Boom, you will also notice that the visuals, in comparison with the finished product, looked a lot better earlier on. So why is this? What is the reason for this apparent downgrade, as some have put it? The first thing to note is that all of this early material that didn't make it into the final game was never actually intended to be a part of the game, one developer told me. This purported early hub world footage, showing more detailed environments, better models and animations, in fact shows nothing more than test material. That's one thing, but what about that first trailer shown for Sonic Boom with the lovely dubstep music? Why doesn't the final game look anything like that? The short answer is that despite the trailer announcing that it was coming to Wii U and sort of heavily implying that it was showing a Wii U game, it wasn't. None of the footage you saw in that first trailer is even running on the Wii U. It was running on much more powerful PC hardware. So Sega, Nintendo, Big Red Button and everyone involved with that first trailer kind of misled everyone, but legally this is untouchable due to a disclaimer they added right at the start which calls it in-engine footage and says that it was a work in progress. Now, if that was completely accurate, I'd say, fair enough. This is not footage they captured from the game itself, it's in engine, it's not finished, it's subject to change. I understand that and that's fine, but they didn't tell us what exactly that engine is running on and led us to assume that they meant Wii U because, well, it wasn't released on PC. One person I've been speaking to who was high in the hierarchy of Big Red Button at one point told me that the game really never looked anywhere near as good as that first trailer or this earlier material we've seen floating around online when it was on the Wii U. Before it was moved to the Wii U, when Sega struck an exclusivity deal with Nintendo, it was being developed with unspecified next-gen hardware in mind. Most of the work was already done on Sonic Boom at the time, meaning that Sega had given Big Red Button a very limited window in which to port things is over. The Wii U, for those unaware, is not natively compatible with CryEngine 3, Sonic Boom's engine, which made it a nightmare to work with from a technical perspective. BRB didn't have time to use a new engine start from scratch because they had previously been led to believe that the platform they were developing for would support CE3. To add on top of this list of problems is that the Wii U always has to reserve memory for streaming to the gamepad, which has to stay on all the time. They had no idea that they would have to account for this secondary memory usage previously, which was another thing they were left to deal with. One former member of BRB I spoke to said, if BRB could have gotten the graphics to be better, then they would have. Keep in mind that this was a company founded by an accomplished and ambitious artist. What you're left with then is a recipe for disaster. Sega placed the team in a very difficult situation and it was ultimately their total mismanagement of Boom that was the catalyst for its failure. Most of the employees at BLB had to work six day weeks for years to ensure the game was finished and even that wasn't enough. There was a lot of crunch time which meant the working conditions were less than ideal to say the least. 
This led to quite a few people leaving before development was finished, including some layoffs. Unfortunately, despite Big Red Button's predicament, they've ended up as the only target for blame when it comes to Rise of Lyric. So, what is the future for Big Red Button? Will the company survive? Well, right now it is. A lot of people have left, it is slightly smaller, a company of around 25 people. Right now they're no longer working on Sonic and they're working on new pitches to get another project greenlit. Be sure to tell me your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Soon, for Unseen 64, I will be taking a look behind the doors of Nintendo software technology to explain what happened to their mysterious project Hammer on the Wii. Thanks for watching.